Oh my God! Does it, we have trek organizations. We have trekkies on the show with us. We have, I mean, just everybody is amazing. I, I, I'm flabbergasted here. Uh, me too. Well, and don't forget all the good food because you know cheese popcorn. <laughs> my favorite. I knew we were going to start off with that. We we cannot we, mention it again, right? We have to talk about cheese popcorn when I'm on the show. <laughs> we have a full cavalcade over here of guests. Yes, we do. Well, let's start off with uh, just to my right is Mr. C.B. Bjork. How are you, brother? How you doing, Johnny? C.B. told me, you know, we can just talk about Trek stuff tonight. We ain't got to talk about me being a psychic medium with an award-winning book out right now. Nope, this is Trek night, so <laughs> I, I'm here to talk about everything Trek. Okay, but I'm going to give you a plug. C.B. Bjork is a psychic medium. He sat down with me on an episode of Brother Brother Beer Cast, and he has a new book out, which is titled... Uh, it's the Green Book of Psychic Development, Understanding the Psychic Journey, and it kind of talks about everything uh, that a learning psychic understands and grow, goes through. Perfect. And the website, where we can find uh, it? You can find it at cbbjork.com. That's C-B, B as in boy, J as in Jack, O-R-K dot com. And he is archived in Brother Brother Bear Cast episode, so definitely check it out. That was a fun one. And to his right... Is Sea Dog, Mr. Cullen? Sea hey. <laughs> Dog. Well, Cult Cinema Cavalcade is your show. You are correct, sir. T tell you, us about Cult Cinema Cavalcade. Uh, Cult Cinema Cavalcade is a podcast. I know you don't care for the term, but I like it. <laughs> uh, where we take a, a different cult, uh, obscure, whatever movie, and we, we talk about that one movie for the episode. Uh, we also had some special episodes. Most recently, that just actually I think um, came out last night. We had a Versus episode that was Star Trek The Motion Picture versus Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. And we had to decide which was the better of the two. <laughs> Not an easy watch on either case. I love I, Star Trek, but who lordy. I am dying to know how that one came out. I'm going to have to check it out. What's you the better. website over there? CultCinemaCavalcade.com. We're also on Facebook, and we're on Twitter, CC Cavalcade. It couldn't be easier to find us. That's just it, people. It is Cullen yes. from Cult Cinema Cavalcade. It's all kinds of Cs. That's Sea Dog. That's my buddy there. Sea Dog. I'm glad I'm not the only dog. <laughs> he calls me M-Dog. So and to I'm his dog. right is the Jeff Chandler. What's up, Johnny? How you doing, my brother? I'm doing pretty good. How about I'm, yourself? I'm wonderful, man. All righty. I've been trying to get you on an episode up here at this theater for a while now. We finally got you railed in. You got that right, man. Where's the show now? I know you're starting one. Uh, we're we're going to work on a show called The Geeky Corner. Not quite sure what it's going to be, but it's going to be geeky. Uh, we're trying to get our show back together. We have one that's called The uh, Sci-Fi Go Go. We kind of give a spoiler review sort of expose of older movies. Like it's classic so sci-fi, things like that. So, we're, we're, And we're in hiatus right now. We're trying to just do a little retooling. So. You're building, yeah. So yes, your sir. website is hotchandler.com? Is that what it is? Uh, you're not supposed to talk about that on the air, Johnny. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different website. Okay. Do not Google that, people. No, I'm do, not, do not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah. Miss Mandy, where are we going to start with this lineup? Because we have several guests to get to before we even start talking about the movie. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, they're going to kind of give their expertise as well throughout the evening. And our first guest is actually Lisa from Starbase Indy. Lisa from Starbase Indy. Starbase. I didn't know we had a Starbase. Hi, Miss Lisa. Hi, how are you? Tell me about Starbase Indy. So Starbase Indy is your local volunteer-run Star Trek convention. So it's run completely by fans. We put together an event Thanksgiving weekend each year where we bring in actors to talk about their roles in various science fiction. It started out as a pure Star Trek convention, but we cross, we're a pan fanual at this point. We cross <laughs> different fandoms, any sort of science fiction. We also bring in scientists to talk about everything from uh, astronomy to forensics to Molecular oh. biology, just all sorts of different geeky interests. Yeah, that's interesting. And we've got Cullen's fan making panels. faces of no, I, I figured Cullen wanted to jump in there. <laughs> You're making faces at me. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm just lost in your eyes, Johnny. That's fine. I'm just, I'm just enjoying. I'm just enjoying Lisa as well. That's all. <laughs> okay. I hope your wife's not listening to this. Where? Uh, <laughs> so, thank you, CB. Where's the? Uh, this year's convention going to be, or where's this year's meeting going to happen? This year's convention is at the Wyndham 
which is the southwest corner of the city, down by where, if you've been around a while, where the old airport was. Mm -hmm. Way back in the day, it was the Adams Mark Hotel, but now it's the Wyndham Indianapolis West. Very cool. And we'll be starting, oh, afternoon of Thanksgiving Friday, and we'll run through Sunday. And if anyone wants to contact you about possibly coming to the show or doing anything there, what would they do? You can find us on the web at starbaseindy.com. We've got Facebook's Facebook page. We've got a Facebook group. We've got Twitter. We've got Instagram. Just Google Starbase Indy, and you'll find all sorts of interesting stuff. Now, do you have any good Star Trek stories? What kind of good Star Trek stories? Name name the, your favorite <laughs> actor that you've met from Star Trek. Uh, my favorite actor from last year's convention had to be Lee Ehrenberg. He's been a variety of different Star Trek characters. He's a little bit shorter, so he's been uh, he's a good build for an alien, is what he told us from stage. Uh, m people may recognize him in his own face. He's Grumpy the Dwarf on Once Upon a Time, so he's on the air currently mm -hmm. as that. Yeah, okay, now, now I'm, I'm linking that. Good job. Okay. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and so he talked about the different directors that he worked with on Star Trek and sort of the process of being different sorts of aliens because you're trying to shift your movement and make the character as non-human as possible since it's, you know, not supposed to be from this planet. And so he was probably my favorite from this year. I, I have actually been to Starbase Indy. Excellent. Are you coming back this year? Tell I, me you're coming back this year. I, I hope to make it this year. Excellent. Unfortunately, the family likes to travel over that mm. weekend, so I Whatever. haven't been for a few years. But, but I have been there, and I have really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, one of the things people tell us is they like the small environment. It's not 100,000 people. It's under 1,000 people. So if there's someone there you want to see, whether it's an actor or it's a local podcaster or artist or creator, you can actually get to meet that person and have conversations with them. Nice. And the, the, one of the greatest benefits to having it small is uh, the lack of lines. Because you go to a bigger convention, yep. you spend an enormous amount of time waiting to have fun. Yeah, we kind of aspire to have lines. <laughs> but we're not there yet. <laughs> it's cool. It's just like a hangout. It's fine. I like that, too. Yeah, it's very much a hangout, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned it's a volunteer uh, group, right? Right. How, how did it come together? How did Starbase Indy actually form? So it's been around a while. The first year was 1988. And yeah. it was a bunch of geeks who wanted to get together and talk about Star Trek and other geeky properties, which is kind of where the whole Star Trek convention phenomenon came from. And so about 13 years ago, a group of women took it over. Um, they retired last year. They ran this thing for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of in a transition year this year with another great crew of volunteers figuring our way out because, you know, we haven't been doing it for the last decade. Um, <laughs> but it's just a group who wants to create a community around science fiction and Star Trek, people who are inspired by Gene Roddenberry's vision, who think it's important to get together and have conversations about possibility. Because that's what science fiction is all about, right? What would this look like on another planet? How would society be different? How would culture and government and religion and how would all of those things be different and we know that Star Trek has a history of that right so it was the first African-American person in a professional role on TV it was the first interracial kiss and people today don't see why that was a big deal but I've got a friend who is still pissed off at country music because his local affiliate ran Grand Ole Opry instead of Star Trek that week because it was too revolutionary <laughs> <laughs> they were on the wrong oh, side of history. Sometimes uh, it happens, but you have to you have to imagine things before you can make them happen, right? So we're yeah. all walking around with communicators in our pocket, and you know the door at the grocery store didn't open on its own when Star Trek first aired, right? So these ideas come out in science fiction first. We had to use our arms like animals, right? Isn't that terrible? Can it's you like, imagine? It's like being in prison. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants. They have to exercise. I mean, that's no good. <laughs> that's not my America. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, even today on our phones, we have Siri, and we can just tell Siri who to call, just kind of like hitting the <laughs> communication badge and saying, you know, Kirk to Enterprise, and so call the Enterprise. So it's great stuff. Right. Yeah, we're getting the technology is moving more and more in the in the direction of what we've envisioned. So the series more of a personal engineer than a personal assistant, what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a Major Barrett 
version of the Siri voice, which is kind of a shame. She was the computer voice on all the Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Major Barrett played three roles, four roles in the movies. Which yeah, she was Nurse, Nurse Chapel in the original series. She was uh, number Lu one, Luxana Troy, and number one. She was number in one the in the pilot. In yes. the pilot, yes. 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 Then yep. she went to Major Barrett, or yep. not Major Barrett, <laughs> to um, Nurse Chapel. Nurse Chapel. Mm -hmm. Then she was Loxana Troy, uh -huh. and then she was the computer voice. And Correct. she was the computer in, in several of the series, if not yeah. all of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Go Rod, ahead. <laughs> Rod Roddenberry has been at the convention, not for a couple of years, but and virtually. He took us on a tour of his home one year, so we've got some some connection with that that founding you know energy oh. still. That's excellent. Have you ever had, um, I, I know there's a, an enormous wealth of people that have been associated with, uh, with Star Trek. Have you ever had um, uh, John Delancey? I know that he, he seems to be, sometimes he's hard, sometimes he's easy to get. Has he ever been with uh, your group? You know, I don't, not in the last decade for certain. That's how sure. long I've been going. Um, he was at Indie PopCon last year. Mm, so he's right. been in Indy recently, but he hasn't been to Starbase Indy. Um, we've had, let's see, folks from Next Generation. We had Jonathan Frakes my first year. Oh, for some, that's huge. For some yeah. odd reason, that sticks out in my mind. That's a huge <laughs> day. Right. Now, You're still your beating heart. Now, yeah, now, now like when, he, when he came into the room and he sat down, did he swing his leg over the back of the chair? He better have. You know, I'm sure he did, but I don't remember. Ah, and okay. we have a captain's chair on our set. We actually have a bridge set that all the actors... Uh, come out and talk yeah. from. So that's a really big chair. I'm not he sure. He'll do it. He doesn't care. Yeah, I, I'd have to. I have to see. <laughs> there's video of this somewhere. Now I'm going to have to go look. Which which bridge? Do you have uh, the next generation? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that'd be hard to step over that one. If it's yeah. Next generation. It's, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about that chair. I've sat in that chair. I'm a yoga teacher. And I'm not sure my leg would work that way. So maybe, but I'm yeah. just not sure. <laughs> How do you how do you folks fabricate that M make it the the bridge? Because it's not like you can just go out and buy like oh, I bought I I bought this kit and now I have the Enterprise bridge in my living room. So the bridge actually dates all the way back to 1988, and it was made by the original founder of Starbase Indy, hmm. and we were able to acquire it from him. We keep it in storage every year. It's quite the uh, endeavor to put it together. Sure. Yeah. Does it mean is it? to light up and stuff. It does. We've got computer <laughs> screens. They run the L cars. They, each computer screen runs different things. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I've uh, been to the... Uh, it, it doesn't exist now, unfortunately, uh, but back when they had the Star Trek experience in Vegas, yes. you know, you could be on the, the Enterprise... Right. Uh, uh, bridge there. Have you, did you ever? We are ever able to go to that? I have not been there, and I'm not going to make it to Vegas this year, which breaks my heart a little bit. Yeah. No, it was... Um, it was magical, I won't lie. Yeah, I, 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 so I'm told. <laughs> Easy, Colin. I know Easy. a lot of people who've been there. And I, yeah. I, I've made it to Vegas to the Star Trek experience as well. I loved Quark's Bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah great place to hang out. Well, shout out to Quark's. We yeah. didn't get to play any Dom Jot, though, but no. it's good other than that. This is kind of a big year for Star Trek. I mean, this movie is great, but this is also the 50th anniversary of the of the original series first airing. That's right. Mm -hmm. I know. September 1966, the first episode aired on uh, CBS, if I remember correctly. Was it I think NBC. So. NBC. Yes, it was NBC. CBS owns it now. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And so, it, yeah, it uh, ran three seasons, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, it. Uh, and it fortunately, won't die. It, fortunately, <laughs> we, we it died. We won't let it die. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fortunately, it did die in 1969, and that's what made it popular. Yeah. Was because it was just starting to hit that mark of where people were really responding to it, and then they wanted more. Well, it was it was uh, cheap in syndication. That's a yeah. reason you know why people got to see so much of it. They could run it all the time, and it didn't cost stations very much, and it just grew from that. Well, and if you think about some of the history, if you know some of the history, the uh, the station or the, the network didn't really want to make it. Lucille Ball stepped up and said, mm -hmm. oh, no, you are going to make this show. Mm -hmm. um, and she had the star power to make that happen. Uh, Nichelle Nichols resigned from the show after the first, ser the first season because she didn't like what they were doing with her character. And she literally met Martin Luther King Jr. at an event and he was introduced as a big fan of the show, and he, she told him, I just resigned. He's like, no, you cannot do that. What you're doing is important. We and need so you on TV. Yeah. We need yeah. you out there. Yeah, yep. yeah. absolutely. So, so indirectly, if it wasn't for Martin Luther King Jr., we wouldn't have the fan dance 
from Star Trek V <laughs> is what you're saying. She naked. Sometimes the universe steps in and makes sure the important things really get Good. done. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. So what are you looking forward to in the movie tonight, dear? All of it. Just the experience. Um, it's great to see the new direction and and energy that Abrams has brought into the franchise. It's great to see new generations getting introduced to this methodology and this, this worldview. As the only one here on the panel, I think, who's seen the movie, I can tell you... We're watching you. you. It, Don't spoil it. We're watching it's, you. It's wonderful. You're going to come out <laughs> and you're just going to just be in awe. It, it harkens back to the original series, to episodes from the original series. Every character has their moment. It's just wonderful. It's the best of the reboot of the Kelvin series, as they call it. So it's really the best one. That appears to be the consensus on my Facebook stream as well. Yeah, they're, they're right. It, it's it's great. So I hope you enjoy the movie. and I am confident that I will. Yeah, it's, it's great. All one, of so. the times I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I plan yeah. on going back and seeing it in 3D. So I've, I've got to see it at least more than probably two, maybe even three times, because it, it, it's really good. It just brings back all the chemistry. It brings back all the action. Everything is just hitting on all cylinders with it, so it's just wonderful. You know, the 2009 movie played a part in Starbase Indy as well. Um, the woman who was convention chair for 12 years, she told me that we were done after 2008. They were Everyone was burned out. They were, it, it's hard to keep a fan-run convention going, right? Yeah. There's not a yeah. profit motive. It's kind of a... Kind of a Weird thing. What are you that doing was, to me? That was me playing with the soundboard over here. We're having technical difficulties. <laughs> so, so Kim calls me one day on the phone um, in, oh, I don't know, July, and she says, Lisa, are you sitting down? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting down. She says, we're bringing Star Race Indy back. And I said, I know. She says, you do not know that. I wasn't coming back with this. You do not know that. I'm like, all right, but I'm pretty sure I knew that. <laughs> well, give us your website over there, darling. It's starbaseindy.com. That's pretty quick. Yeah. All right. Starbaseindy.com. <laughs> Darling, thank you for being on the show here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Con Lisa. Thank you. All right. As a side story. Let's um, see where we are now. Yes, CB. I was just going to jump in and say I've actually met Leonard Nimoy. You've lately? No. Not lately. <laughs> <laughs> no, well. not, not lately. When I was five years old, I was living in Peoria, and he came through. We were eating at a steakhouse, um, and he came in with a whole bunch of people, Playboy Playmates, um, just a whole group of them. It was rather fascinating. Of course, I'm five, and my <laughs> mom and dad are like, there's Mr. Spock. And, of course, I turn around. There's nobody with pointy ears, and, <laughs> and he's not, you know, someone Doesn't green. have the haircut. It yeah. doesn't have the haircut. And I'm like, what? Go, that man at the end, that's Leonard Nimoy. That's the actor who plays Spock. Mm -hmm. So I went over and I said, hi, you know, and I introduced myself and I said, I love Star Trek. And he was really nice. He was really kind. And he, you know, talked to me for a minute and I wandered on. And yeah, it was just a really neat moment to. Uh, do you remember if he was wearing a turtleneck? It seems like in every picture where he's not on Star Trek, he's wearing a turtleneck for whatever reason. I, I don't recall. I remember the table was really long and there was about eight to ten people there. And there were a lot of, a lot of important people because it was... I mean, literally, the girls were dressed in the bunny outfits. It was oh, wow, okay. rather fascinating. No, no, wait, where were you? Said Peoria, yeah, they, yeah, right? Peoria, okay, Peoria, so Illinois. he came in with a bunch of bunnies just yeah. off the street? No, or? no, no, just the two or three of them. They are getting ready to get on an airplane. Oh, okay. The, the, okay. the uh, steakhouse was called Sky Harbor. It was just outside of the Peoria Airport, and he was doing an appearance there. Okay. And they were getting dinner before they took off, and we were there for dinner, and it was like, wow, so... I've gotten to meet one of my heroes. <laughs> that is definitely an odd scene. I don't. I don't. I'm, not, I'm sitting in uh, McDonald's, and here comes Shatner. You know, hello, what's up? You know, <laughs> He's eating, just eating a Big Mac. Like, what do you want? I, 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 I'm sure it happens. Hey <laughs> He's got to eat. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet he doesn't walk into McDonald's on his own though. I'm, so. I, I, I'm sure Shatner has not seen a McDonald's in decades. <laughs> I don't know. He's a little <laughs> round the middle now. He, he may have. More well, than a little. Well, all that all that uh, horse riding, you know, that's not working his body out. The horse is getting the workout. That's it's, true. It's got that's Shatner true. on the back. <laughs> that's Shat-tastic. That is shat -tat. That is. Sh uh, how wonderful would it be if he had a horse named Shat-tastic? shat, -tastic? shat -tastic. Awesome. <laughs> That would be shat That <laughs> yeah, would be. Ass flipping beautiful. <laughs> I believe we? we're going to get uh, Mitch here, the general manager of uh, Hamilton 69 Mass on the mic. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you? Good I'm to see you, good. Johnny. We got a crowd in here tonight. Yeah, 
yeah, we're doing all right. This is looking good. Bunch of Trekkies. I'm loving it. So have you seen the movie yet? These are my people? No, I, I have not. I have not. I'm waiting to see it with uh, friends and family and stuff. So, It's it's great. It's great. Saw it last night. It's, it's the best of the relaunch. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm, I love the new franchise. So um, I'm very encouraged. I'm sad that uh, Anton has passed. Mm -hmm. Anton Yeltsin played Chekhov in the uh, relaunch. He... Um, unfortunately was crushed by his car they do make a little tribute to him in the movie yeah i heard so that in the credits so it's it's really nice it's touching they're not apparently the news is, is that they're not going to recast Chekhov. they're not going to recast that role they're going to just write him out so yeah. they're going to honor him with not you know just getting another actor and doing that so i, I think that's right. great of them to do huh really yeah yeah, I mean, you know, you're attached to him because you, you probably spend six months, you know, doing these films. So you've got a year and a half of working with someone closely. Yeah. And you develop that strong friendship. You develop that strong bond. Suddenly they're gone. Yeah. It's one thing if someone quits. It's another thing if they can't be there. Yeah, if they yeah. end. I guess I understand that in this franchise. I think if they reboot or do something else, I think it would probably be okay to... Oh, oh it, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But it, when you look at the original series, Chekhov wasn't even in the first season. So he didn't come along until the second mm. season of the original series. So it's kind of okay to be missing yeah. a little check off. Right. And it wasn't in the animated series either. Yeah. So real travesty of nature. The animated series <laughs> is a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it helps if you're on a trip when you watch that. It makes it a lot more palatable. They have the little black eyes. Like yeah. I was watching them once when I was, uh, I may or I may not have been imbibing alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and it started to freak me out. Like it was at three three thirty in the morning, and I was like, "None of them have man? whites in their eyes." <laughs> <laughs> They've been in space too long, right? <laughs> it's, it's right. What's going on up here at Hamilton Sixteen IMAX since we last talked to you, brother? Well, uh, we've got you know we're we're wrapping up the summer here. School starts back up in a couple weeks, but um, we've got a lot of uh, great movies coming up in the fall. Our flashback cinema. Uh, is still going strong. We've got Gremlins coming up, and we're going to do a, a Pokemon tie-in for that, so that should be fun. Mm. Um, I saw the sign over there, no Pokemon catching in the auditorium. <laughs> yeah. You is think you wouldn't have to ask. You're has that become to have your yeah. phones off. You has know? that become a problem? Um, I, don't, I think we're just trying to nip it in the bud before it happens. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird. Like I, I drove by here about 5 o'clock in the morning one night this week, and there were people all around my building. <laughs> Yeah. So I drove up thinking, like, if I just revved my engine in my truck, I'd scatter them <laughs> like errant birds or something. <laughs> and I was like, what are you all doing at my movie theater? And they were like, we're Pokemon, bro. <laughs> yeah. we're, we got to catch them all. I was like, okay. but <laughs> Were they surfers like, as well? <laughs> for the purpose of this conversation, they were. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> Not a lot of tasty waves here right. at Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be able to tie a little something in with it. Yeah, absolutely. So, can you give yeah. us a teaser about what you're going to do? Well, uh, basically, you can turn your business, if you spend a little bit of money, and turn your business into a place where uh, the uh, Pokemon availability and activity goes up. So we're going to be uh, doing that. Since gremlins oh. are kind of the original pocket monsters, if you uh -huh. will, as Steven says, um, we're going we're gonna to kind of tie the two together and see if Ooh. we can make some magic for folks. I am very in. I love the sound of that. I just caught I caught a meowth walking up here today. I'm yeah. very excited. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Gotta get with the times, Johnny, or you'd be left behind. A meow. A meow. Yes. Okay, at least I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> it is. It's one of the easier ones to pronounce. <laughs> a lot of people will say that Star Trek or Trek fans or Trekkies don't have a life, but I would have to say that. Uh, I'm a little bit ahead of the curve because I'm not chasing these things. I think I have a life. Huh? I, I don't even have it on my phone. I don't even. I wouldn't even know how to put it on. I, I wouldn't even. <laughs> I wouldn't even recognize a group of them standing you around. You don't know how no to idea. download an app. That's what you're saying. <laughs> it's the hardest thing in the world. You know, you got to You got to admit, though, that I mean, I know we're a little off uh, Star Trek here, but the Pokemon stuff. You know, I, I see a lot of people doing things that I think are really kind of endearing. Like the other day. I saw a teenage girl, probably 15 years old, walking around the movie theater, and her parents were with her, and they were talking, and she was talking to her parents, which I have a 15-year-old daughter, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that, that 
communication isn't always happening. She's kind of like, give me food, give me money, otherwise just leave me alone kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, But I thought it was cool, and I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing a lot of people just kind of like high-five each other who are strangers. Oh, yeah. And, and mm-hmm. there's there's a, there's a lot of fun with that. I think I've it's met, not I've, my thing, but it's cool. I've met several people. I mean, we're not like we're not like chums or anything like that. But we've met. We've I've enjoyed several conversations with people I've never would have ever talked to. Yeah, I've, I've had social interaction with people that I never would have spoken to because I don't talk to people in public. But you see everybody <laughs> walking around with their phone and they're playing Pokemon Go. And hey, you can you can strike up a conversation. You say, Hey, well, what'd you find? How are well, you doing? Yeah, it's an instant connection. It's kind yeah. of like if you're a Trekkie and you see someone. You know, wearing a Starfleet emblem, like, hey, hey I like I Star Trek is. too. Let's talk for a while. You know, it's, it's a similar thing. Yeah, it does seem like it's a. I mean, it's it's a little bit like a hyper extension of like con culture almost, where you go to a convention and you just know that the people that are that are kind of into this thing are going to be approachable, and and mm-hmm. so I see people interacting kind of on that level. It's kind of cool. Cool. Kind of cool, I guess. I, I'm I'm lost there. Well, Every, that'll, everything that'll be can't be event. for everyone. It's okay. Yeah. You, you actually have to go outside to do this, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's not <laughs> yes, for me. It's a little too warm outside. You don't want to get any exercise. <laughs> <laughs> not at 95 degrees. And, well, uh, no. 100% humidity. <laughs> I need the exercise. I just hadn't been getting it. <laughs> so uh, tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun here. We're going to have a bunch of cosplayers around, um, Klingons and Federation representatives and and uh, all kinds of folks here from uh, Starbase, um, Indy. I'm I'm sorry if I don't remember the proper names of their organizations, but um, Star uh, Starbase Indy, Starbase yeah. Indy, mm-hmm. and uh, the I believe the Klingon Assault Group. We're going to have people oh, from man. both those groups here. Um, they've been here for the last two movies. There's, they're a lot of fun. Um, did you see the chair over there, Johnny? I did. I got a c- couple of pictures in it. Oh, nice. I had to get in there. They, they wanted me to put the, the wig on. I couldn't do that just here. You know, I'm too vain. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. We don't want to cover up the goods. I get exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. brother. Exactly. <laughs> the face that launched the thousand ships. You can't cover that up. Yeah. <laughs> that is too cool. Hamilton 16 IMAX and good, rich quality theaters right here in beautiful. Hamilton Town Center is where we do this once a month. Well, I guess it's been more than once a month here and there, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Just check us out for the big premieres. Is movie night with JL Media. Sound isn't always bad, but apparently we're having issues this evening. <laughs> but the recording is going to be good. You wait until I come back. Thanks. Yeah, a big and flipping night, too. <laughs> Not happy is what I am right now. Not happy. Uh, I'll, I'll come over and tickle you later. That'll make you laugh. You'll be fine. <laughs> You're already laughing. Look at you. You're fine. Just the thought of you over here tickling me is making me laugh. <laughs> See? It's not making me laugh. <clears throat> <laughs> You'll get your turn. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> we also have a Suicide Squad coming up. I'm look, really looking forward to that. Um, you guys excited about, about seeing that film? Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. I, although not as much as the internet is, but I am looking forward to seeing it. I don't need to see a uh, another character vignette every other day. Like, I'll see your movie. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing about this. I don't know. It feels like it's been being promoted for a year. Like I, I get it. Yep. I want to see your movie. Please leave me alone. The if movie you want us, it's coming out. Yes. If you want us to see it so bad, then release it now. <laughs> Quit. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People don't have to go to see one movie or another. There's, there's 24 hours in a day. It will be fine. <laughs> that is the weekend of Gen Con that is coming out. But we will be up here on August the third, a Wednesday night. To do this one. Hmm. Are you looking forward to a Suicide Squad, Johnny? Absolutely. Yeah. Now that one I'm looking forward to, without a doubt. Who are you, who are you most looking forward to seeing in the uh, Joker? Believe the Joker. Oh, Harley yeah. Quinn. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm being honest, man. I, I want to see what uh, this Jared guy can do. Uh, he's an amazing actor. That he is. That well, he is. certainly is out of his mind. So that will help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard. I heard. Uh, Cast members were just terrified of him because he was doing that. Yeah, like oh, here's here's a gift of a dead rat. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, real. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hmm. All right, I think we have some more guests around here somewhere. Mandy's shaking her head yes at me. She's over there mad at me. We're gonna right on. Well, it's good talking to you guys. Okay. All right, thanks, thanks for stopping thanks. by. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch.
Well, I'm having a great time. I don't care what you uh, jokers think. Uh, right now, well, we're going to have a good recording. I know this. <laughs> well, that's good. Good. The live it sounds stuff, great to me. The live stuff sucks right now. Uh, right now, I believe we have a uh, Tracy Canfield. Is that, pro- that correct? Okay, I just want to make sure I pronounce it right. It's not a difficult. It's not a difficult name. I just want to make sure I get it right. Okay. And you are a Klingonist, correct? I am. So it's, that's like. I am. That's yeah. like, I assume it's like a linguist, but with Klingon. Is that correct? That's correct. My PhD is in computational linguistics, which uses computers to analyze human languages. That helps. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I happen to be a genius, so. Yeah. And, uh, well, I happen to be kind of a smartass. And so when I was <laughs> doing some of my PhD coursework, I turned it into Simon and Klingon. Um, and then ended up getting invited to talk at science museums, uh, to do things at conventions, about the real science that went into creating Klingon. And I ended up being the voice of the Janolan Caves audio tours in Australia, meaning wow. the Australian government flew me out because they couldn't find anyone in the continent who could pronounce all of the Klingon words for them. That, now, when you did... <laughs> so you're the voice of it, is it correct? I am the voice okay. of it. Did you do it in an Australian accent? <laughs> we did not. However, they already had auditors in a lot of languages, okay. um, one of which was German and uh, one of which was French. And the French was just so mild-mannered as if they, they didn't want to insult you by suggesting that maybe you would take food in the caves or get off the paths, whereas the German was just very uh, harsh and... Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of tried to strike some fear into your heart. So, so, so I went into that recording studio determined to strike more fear into yeah, people's I, I, hearts. I was going to say, uh, German really lends itself well to Klingon, is what I would assume. It does. I actually know a German rapper who raps in Klingon as uh, Klingon M. You can find his videos oh on YouTube. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That is fantastic. That wow. Is, oh so, so the French person tried to make Klingon... Inviting oh, in, no, in no, a way, no. or they had a French person who did their French audio mm-hmm. tour, a German person did their German audio tour. Mm-hmm. Okay, those already existed. I came in and did the Klingon audio tour. So oh, okay, Klingon okay, Klingon. okay. They, gotcha. they, they, they did not. They did not internationalize okay. Klingon. Okay, that's what was throwing <laughs> me at first. I'm going. <laughs> hey, <what> okay, <laughs> okay. So in Australian, it wouldn't be like kapla, mate. Hey, kapla, mate. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's not Klingon. You don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who came up with Klingon in the first place? Uh, a linguist named Mark Okrand created Klingon. Okay. Um, although, if you want to get pedantic, and Trek fans always do, just want to get no. a little more into the details. Not us. <laughs> he, created it, he created it for Star Trek Three, but uh, in Star Trek One, there's a little bit of Klingon. A little reek jaw. Yeah. 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 And that was created by James Doohan, who played Scotty, um, who just asked, can I do the Klingon now that we're doing a movie? He spoke into a, a, a tape recorder. Mark Leonard, uh, who is better known for other Star Trek yeah. arts, like being Spock's dad, who played the Klingon, just memorized it from the recording. So when Mark Okrand came in, he did the thing that a linguist would do if they had something from an undocumented language. He sat and listened to that again and again. Um, and Duan hadn't come up with a grammar for it. Uh, there was just a sentence-by-sentence translation. But he said, well, maybe this part is the verb and this part is the subject. Mm. So he made sure that when he created the full Klingon dictionary and all the thousands of words and all the full grammatical rules that a language would have, that everything that James Dewan had come up with would still fit in the language. Holy and would be cow. Backwards compatible. Yeah. That's crazy. That's wow. fantastic. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. Even you guys didn't know that. Ooh. That I did not know. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not a linguist. I don't know these things. I've never met a linguist, so uh, yeah, yeah, there's exactly. a lot of things we don't know. So. Well, the reason that you've never bet- met a linguist is that you haven't come to the uh, Klingon events here in town. That's right. Uh, okay. um, <laughs> where's the Klingon events? Yeah. The Klingon events end up, end up being all over town. I actually. Uh, um, assumed command of the local Klingon ship, the IKS Ponkhatlu. Um, and if you come to our meetings, you can learn to say that. Um, <laughs> every fifth Saturday of a month that has a fifth Saturday, we invade a local restaurant. We call it Today is a Good Day to Dine. Good uh, idea. People show mm. up in uniform, uh, but uniforms are not required. Uh, if you come, you can see my Andorian outfit with a little uh, Arduino controlled antennae that move. Sweet. Can, can, can I bring my bat look? Like. You can, well. Let me check with the restaurant <laughs> on the bat lift. Just want to get a little meal. I mean, you know. <laughs> you got to so. cut your steak with something. Now, yeah. come on. You, you have know? to bring your own gog. We haven't found any place that serves gog yet. Oh, yet. <laughs> We're working on it. Is, is there a website <laughs> that lists where you guys are meeting? or? Um, we, we vote on that. We have a Facebook page. Okay. Um, okay. And the Facebook and, page is. Um, if you go to the, the JL Media Facebook page in PAX, there's a link that goes directly to our event. Okay. okay. So everybody wants to drop by the JL Media page and like it anyway. There you go. Yeah. And then they can come dine with the Klingons next Saturday. Oh, that's hmm. we're, we're also going to be here at the theater tomorrow. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be here in uniform. Uh, most of our group will be here kind of in force from six to nine. So if you're coming to the seven o'clock show, uh, you have plenty of time to come by, get a photo with us, uh, learn how to say a couple of useful Klingon phrases. Yeah. Um, but we should be here all evening. So how did, um, you said you're, that you've assumed command of the Klingon ship. Yes. How, how did this, this ship come together? How did the, the crew meet and form and become a crew? Uh, well, there's a guy named Michael Roney Jr., uh, better known to me as Nach Kuhn, um, who in 2009 decided that he was going to go see the new Star Trek movie in uniform. And even though he didn't know anyone else was going, he put on his Klingon uniform, his wife put on his, her Orion uniform, and they dressed up their, their preschoolers in their yeah. Klingon uniforms and invaded the theater and <laughs> then thought, we should do this again. We're forming a Klingon ship. Um, and so gradually over the years, he's one of the people that I've done presentations with about Klingon, and he said, you can be our comms officer. Uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, why not make the linguist the comms officer? And, and so um, uh, we would, you know, if you see somebody at a, a Star Trek event or if you're talking to somebody and they say they like Star Trek, you're like, do you like Star Trek? Do you also like Golden Corral? <laughs> do, do you also well, who like, doesn't? Yeah. Do you, do you also like playing Klingon Monopoly? Yeah. I'm waiting for the Golden Corral Star War uh, Star Trek crossover. Right? You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Quark is just running a Golden Corral, and that'd be fantastic. I would watch that every week. I think that would, that, that would be Latinum Corral or Gold oh. Press Latinum Corral. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> do, uh, do you know? Um, you, you are a, a, a Klingonist. Do you know of any other... Or, okay, I got two questions. I'm sorry. Sure. One, do you know of any other Star Trek languages that have been fully formed like Klingon? And two, do you know any other uh, languages that are um, that come from like a TV show fiction or, 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 or fiction? Yeah. Yes, yes. Sure. Well, let's start with the first one first, the Star Trek languages. Klingon is far and away the most developed one, uh, but since it's been worked on for decades and since the Klingon Dictionary was published, that's not very surprising. Um, in the new movie, you can actually hear um, some language that is being subtitled, and I immediately left the theater, ran out, got on the internet, no nobody wants to tell me anything about it yet. So oh. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to decipher that one the way Mark Okerin deciphered Klingon. But if in um, Wrath of Khan, you'll notice that Spock speaks in Vulcan mm -hmm. um, with Savik. That scene was originally shot in English, and then somebody said, you know, wouldn't it make more sense if the two Vulcans were speaking to each other in Vulcan? Mark Okerund, who, who went on to create Klingon, at this point he wasn't even associated with Star Trek, was in Hollywood because he did the first live closed captioned Oscars uh, as a linguistics consultant. And he was there a little bit early, and he was with a friend in the Paramount uh, cafeteria, and somebody said, hey, Star Trek guys, weren't you just talking about a language problem? Why don't you talk to this guy? So he created Vulcan. He had to match it to the lip movements, but find other sounds hmm. um, that have the same lip movements. So he, lip he movements aren't unique. He did a bad lip reading to he create. Did a bad lip reading. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> because uh, it would have been too expensive to actually reshoot the scene, ah. but they could call the actors back in to redub the scene, and so that's what they did. And he went home going, "I taught a, I taught Spock how to speak Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> that's the biggest nerd linguistics credit ever." Little did he know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that they would goodness. then make the next movie, say the Klingons are the bad guys, and say, "We already know a guy." <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the Klingons are the bad guy. The, the bad guy in almost every Star Trek, well, the, of the original cast anyway. There's only like the fourth. Oh wait, no, the fifth one where there's no no crud. Yes, it is. I the don't fifth remember one. Crud. Who is he? Was he a captain? <laughs> captain Crud. Captain or? Crud. Okay. No, it's the it's the. The second one. That's the only one with no Klingon association. Because at least, like in the the fourth one, they're on a Klingon ship. Yeah. But that's the only. I think it's the second one where there's like absolutely no mention or anything with any Klingon. Yeah. The the, the Klingon free Star Trek. Yeah. And your your other question was about other fictional languages yes. and uh, that have kind of uh, broken off. The really obvious one is Elvish, which was created by J.R.R. Tolkien for the Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they inc in included a great deal of it in the movies. Um, as far as I can tell, nobody actually speaks or converses in Elvish the way you actually fi can find about a dozen people who can have a fluent conversation in Klingon. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who read and write it. Um, there are even journals of Elvish linguistics. Um, Navi is a more recent one from Avatar. Mm -hmm. um, and they hired a linguist to create Navi. And enough people know that that I once listened to a Skype conversation of some people talking about their 
hunting trip of big six legged animals because all of the navi vocabulary had to do with all of these plants and animals <laughs> on the planet but some people had learned enough of it that they could talk about that is there any connection? Uh, and of course, Dothraki um, and now Valyrian in the Game ah, of Thrones, okay. where they hired a linguist uh, once again to use the words that George R. R. Martin had, had mm -hmm. introduced in the books because he hadn't really fleshed out the language completely. And they got someone from the, uh, David J. Peterson from the Language Creation Society to come in and, and create Dothraki and Valyrian for them. Wow. This is, I, I'm going to admit, this is much more fascinating than I thought it was going to be. Wow. And, 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 that's, and that's no insult to you. I've just never talked to a linguist before. It's as really fascinating cool. as I thought it was going to be. So, we, yeah, thank we, you, Colin. Yeah, we, we are nearly hunted to extinction. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I'm, no. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> that's, that's fascinating because I, yeah. I, I knew the, the Klingon and the Vulcan, but... Yeah, I haven't paid any attention to all the others. No. I just figure, you know, somebody writes down a bunch of gibberish on a, on a notepad or something, and they, they make those reals. sounds. Well, and sometimes that's what they do. You know, um, in Star Wars, when you hear Greedo speaking, yeah. Um, yeah. A apparently they got somebody who was a graduate student who knew a little bit of Quechua, which was a South American language, but not very much, and just said, say some stuff that sounds kind of... Uh, strange and foreign give us words give us some words wow. okay and so it doesn't actually translate into anything or have any other grammar it's yeah. not even actually quechua it's just sort of him riffing on the sounds of quechua so then Ooh. to talk about how much more cool star trek is than star wars <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no one that's really gone through and made any star wars languages like they have with star not, trek not that i'm aware of for star wars it's almost more like you know all of the the sound stuff that ben burt do uh, did so it's like you're walking around in a fleshed out world but not quite as much as though you could step into it yeah we're whereas, observers we're not yeah. immersed in it yeah. whereas, whereas i think star trek's always been a world where there's been the blueprints or there have been um you know these these guides with federation regulations or things mm -hmm. like this this very fleshed out world that you're only seeing a little of well when gene roddenberry was creating the series he wanted everything to have some sort of scientific connection mm -hmm. he didn't just want to say We'll create this, and it just so it's there. He created yeah. stuff in a pattern so that it would fit logically. It yeah. would fit scientifically, even with some of the, um, I want to say, when they were bringing props in, when they were bringing things in, he would have people explain why does it do this, how does it do this, and if they couldn't answer these kind of things, he would know. Mm -hmm. You know, it was that's one of the reasons why NASA was such great fans of Star Trek was because a lot of Gene Roddenberry's writing and creating had some sort of scientific basis to it, not just, hey, this is great fantasy. Yeah, and and I think that that's part of the reason that you meet so many people uh, in the hard sciences, especially, uh, yeah. who are so inspired by Star Trek. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, Big Bang Theory, you know, yeah, they're fans of Star Wars, but, you know, yeah, they, they speak Klingon. They don't speak, you know, Bantu <laughs> or whatever. So it's Hutties. Hutties, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Tracy, have you seen Star Trek Beyond yet? I have absolutely seen Star Trek Beyond. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what, how to, what the next question to ask here. Uh, did, did, did I, 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 I want to ask you a question, but I don't want to spoil anything about it. What? How do you feel about it? What, what, what did you think about it? Truthfully, I liked it the best of the three new movies. I'm with um, you. I, I enjoyed the, the Star Trek reboot, the, the you know, Star Trek, the Star Trek, as some people call it. I did. I wasn't as into Into Darkness, but uh, but this was the one that I I really thought came together. Not just the characters that I liked so much in in the, you know the first of the three movies in Star Trek itself, but um, the way that that it it just um, the way they outthink people instead of just out fighting them. The yeah. way everybody gets their chance to shine at whatever it is that, that that they're good at, and I think that that's something that both if you you know watch the original series as a kid, and Spock's getting his moments, and Uhura's getting her mm. moments. It, it really um, is an really ensemble. Enjoyed that. It's an ensemble movie. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And it's it's not just Kirk, Spock, and Bones out there doing whatever, and yeah. everybody yeah. else is in the background. Everybody gets their moment. Everybody, it's great action. It's great drama. There's great humor. The interaction between the characters is fantastic. Yeah. You know, and I I love the touching stuff they did with the two Spocks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it at that. And <laughs> it it was just you know wonderful. I was really ex excited by the trailers to see that Simon Pegg had co-written it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he wrote, of course, Shaun of the Dead is what he's best known for. Yeah. And, and of mm -hmm. course, playing Scotty, I guess he did that, too. But, uh, <laughs> as, a, but as a writer, he wrote Shaun of the Dead. He wrote Spaced, which is a, a kind of 
a little tiny bit like Big Bang Theory. Yeah. It's an older show. From it's Britain. one of the best shows ever made. You know, whatever. <laughs> it, it is. I just, I just don't know how many people have seen it because it's past that 18-month window you know, where everybody yeah. forgets. Yeah. Um, you know, he wrote The World's End, which is a wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. And he, it, but in all these movies, they're funny. But he also has such a good sense of character and what mm -hmm. these things mean to these characters. And I think that he brought that to Star Trek. Well, very much. And so. so I was very excited about it, and I was not disappointed to see it. I mean, I. In terms of the summer movies that I've seen so far, this one is the best. Yeah, and perfect. I'm not just saying it as a Trek fan. I'm saying it, it is a full, solid movie. You don't really have to be a Trek fan to enjoy this one. I think you're right. That's a good thing, too. Right. <laughs> yeah, Johnny? A linguist. That was very cool. What is your website over there, dear? Um, our, our website um, is uh, www.facebook.com okay. slash I-K-S-L-I-Y-W-I. Uh, that's Leetwe, which means my comet in Klingon. <laughs> wow. Um, and is our, our ship nickname, which is shorter than IKS Ponkratlu, which is the full name of the ship. And we hope okay. easier for everyone to type. And if you don't want to type it, <laughs> you can go to the JL Media w Facebook page, uh, look for the Star Trek thing, leave a comment there, but you'll see a comment from us that also includes that website, and you can just click on it. So we if there's any Klingons out there listening to this who want to bring a fresh bowl of gach in tomorrow night. Yes. Um, I... I would have to check, though, on the Golden Corral's policy of, of uh, or um, actually, tomorrow night on the theater's policy. I, I yeah. think that with their own bar, yeah. you cannot bring blood wine. They uh, may they may have cock on the menu anyway. <laughs> <laughs> was that correct? Was that even close? No. I no. think that was yeah. Yiddish, Johnny. That is. You, were close, but you got okay. a filthy Klingon mouth. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, ma'am, thank you so much for being on the show with us tonight. Sure. Let, let me just leave you with a, a couple of phrases in, in Klingon. Okay. Well, right. keep yeah. it clean, though. Yeah. Klingon went to Deactivate your communicators and enjoy the film. There we are. Right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much dear. Okay, that was cool. That <laughs> was cool. I like that. That was great. I just sat over here with my mouth open listening to her talk. That was great. <laughs> Miss Mandy, what have we got coming up? Oh, uh, Cullen's got the list now. <laughs> Cullen's yeah, big dog. I do. I'm over here working on sound. Cullen's a big dog now. Now, uh... I, I have your, your card here. I'm going to just gentlemen admit that. Um, I have BDR, well, fi Firehawk Sauls. Is that correct, sir? That's me. That is fantastic. <laughs> Actually, I, I made a mistake and put my rank on there. That rank is fluid. It changes. So uh, I'm a Brigadier uh, General. Brigadier, within. yes. Okay. Okay. So you're General Firehawk Sauls? Correct. All right. Fantastic. And you are from the, the USS Indiana NCC-79158, correct? Yes, sir. I'm the, I'm the commanding officer of that chapter. You are the commanding officer of that chapter. How did you become the commanding officer of the USS Indiana? Well, it's a, it's a bit of a story. Um, our chapter started in 2003. Uh, we spun off of a chapter down in uh, Kentucky who's no longer around. They, they disbanded some time ago. But uh, in 2003, um, a couple of our members spun off and made their own shuttle, which then it's a shuttle is like a chapter in training for a certain amount of time. They commissioned as a full chapter in Louisville. And then, uh, you know, when I moved up here in 2005, I met the CEO of USS Indiana. He made me his communications officer, and we just became really great friends. And, uh, and as time went on, he, you know, he kind of, uh, well, anyway, the, the, he, uh, he passed away. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. He passed okay. away, and I, uh, I found out about it after he had been promoted posthumously. I found out about it in the email, and, uh, and his name was Jeffrey Allen Davis, by the way. Uh, kind of a sad thing, but anyway, uh, I called together the six remaining adults of our chapter in a little business meeting down in uh, uh, New Albany, Indiana, right there next to the river, and we decided right then and there whether to, whether to keep the chapter going and initiate a recruiting drive, or should we just go ahead and fold it up. And uh, we decided to go on, and now we've got uh, 36 members uh, and we're going strong. We're the only meeting chapter in the state of Indiana, and I'm the senior-ranking Starfleet International Officer in this state. Wow. And uh, I've been in fandom myself ever since 2001, so 15 years, you know. Sure, I sure. love this. All my friends are Star Trek people. I mean, you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no, what there I do. Are you know, plenty of people here in Star Trek. This is yeah. what I do for fun. So. <laughs> this being radio, I do want to comment. You have a beautiful uniform. Well, we can thank the uh, the Corpus Christi Quilting Guild uh, lady down there in Corpus Christi made it for me, and I, I love her to death. 
Uh, I haven't seen her in a few years, unfortunately, but thank you very much. It's uh, a next generation outfit. He's wearing full black. He's got uh, the gray across the shoulders and then two gold bands on the wrists. It is a I very beautiful. I started out in operations. Yes. <laughs> it, it, is, it is a very beautiful uniform. Okay. So. But, uh, you know, it's not, if you'll notice, the bands don't match the shirt because in our organization, uh, as, an, as a, a, a leader, like on the battalion, commander of the 1st Battalion Indiana Starfleet Marine Corps and uh, I get to wear the white undershirt, the white dicky, and of course there's my insignia yeah. and the Starfleet Marine Corps insignia there too so Starfleet International is not just some flash in the pan thing, we've been around since 1974. How many chapters yeah. are there? There are uh, Worldwide there are uh, 530 ish chapters and there's uh, wow. certainly there's almost 5,000 members worldwide so, including england australia so the 530 that's like 530 ships chap chapter ships Ship. yes yeah. and also space stations uh oh, okay. th there okay. are those who choose to go the space station way i'm considering that myself uh, you, oh, okay. you, you stated you started out as a shuttle how how does like ship progression take place well there's a shakedown period in other words you have to qualify to be a commissioned chapter Okay. If you start out with four of your friends, you and four friends, you can start a shuttle, and you've got nine months to recruit five more. And then once you're through that pipeline, you are then commissioned as a full chapter of Starfleet International. This gentleman over here, where did he go? Oh, well. Yeah, I saw, yeah, well, yeah we, we saw him. Yeah. There, yeah. there are now, there, currently there's two shuttles in progress in the state of Indiana. Okay. USS Gorkon. Mm -hmm. up in Marion, Indiana, and then there's USS, uh, get this name, you're going to love this, USS Christine Hoagland up in Fort Wayne area <laughs> okay. under, under Master Chief, uh, I'm sorry, Master Gunnery Sergeant Derek Wildstar. That guy is crazy, but we love him, and we're glad to <laughs> welcome him to the team. So if it's from uh, the Fort Wayne area, I thought it would be the, like, the USS Mad Anthony. <laughs> That's what I figured it would be. <laughs> but, yes, we're growing. Uh, we're kind of like a Starfleet International island in a sea of... Uh, uh, we have another larger club that's based here in Indiana, which is, I'm also on their Admiralty Board. Oh, okay. It's called it, Starfleet it, Command. <laughs> is, is there a cap to how many people can be on uh, part of your ship? No, absolutely not. Just as, as long as you can keep it running and keep them all entertained, you know, that's kind of like herding cats, you know. <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> seriously, you got to, if you can't keep them happy and engaged, then they send to wander off, you know, because they have to re- uh, they have to renew their membership every year, and that's not always the easiest thing to do. Yeah. And what kind of activities do you do with your group? We like to do, uh, we like to do uh, community service. We do cosplay, of course. Yeah. Uh, many of our members choose not to do that, and we go out to dinners. We do birthdays. We you know we have internal stuff. We have award ceremonies. Uh, we have the Region One Summit in various places. It's just. And it's a culture, not necessarily just a bunch of fun things. It's a it's a culture that we all participate in, mm -hmm. and uh, and the next thing that my chapter has going will be in October. It'll be the JDRF Walk for Diabetes, and uh, it's a it's it's a thing that our former CEO, the guy I took it over from, he mm -hmm. started it way long time ago. It's kind of like our tradition since he passed away from diabetes. It's one of our 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 core causes that we give to. Awesome. Where, where, where's the uh, event going to happen? Uh, it's going to actually happen downtown at Military Park. No, actually, yeah, Military Park. And there's going to be a 1K, uh, make that a one mile and a 3K walk in support of JDRF. And uh, I have not set up our team page yet, but I plan to as soon as this event is over with. We try to take things one at a time so we don't overwhelm people or give them fatigue, you know. Understand. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's awesome. It's star fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> so now then with the different ships, I mean, Obviously, in Starfleet, there are many different types of ships. Mm -hmm. or do the chapters then progress the, through the ranks the, of the ships, no. or do they just go to ship and then they go? They can have the option to go up to a star base. A chapter can choose the class of ship they want to be. For example, in this process with Mr. With, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Wildstar and the Christine Hoagland, mm -hmm. he commissioned, he created his own class of ship that was then reviewed by the Department of Technical Services, which is part of our organization also. Alex Rog Rosenzweig is the guy who runs it. Uh, he reviewed it. He was issued a hull number, and, uh, and he's got permission to use that ship. It's a Liberty-class combat escort. Nice. And, uh, yeah, and uh, our ship, USS Indiana, was designed and created by our former commanding officer. We have a set of blueprints and drawings. It's, we have 42 decks. It's beautiful. I mean, I, 
come over to my house. I will show you this thing. <laughs> wow. I never tire of looking at these beautiful prints because our former CEO was an actual professional engineer with access to AutoCAD and stuff like that. Okay. And he had a fantastic, fertile imagination. Okay. And we'll you, were always you be indebted to him for what he's done for this making this chapter. Were you invited just these guests over to the... Uh to your house or just anybody who's listening because hey <laughs> my wife's out of town so come on over guys <laughs> put some I'll, beers out i'll bring the beer right yeah. romulan ale yeah, it's it's say, we can it's doable <laughs> have you ever had Star Trek beer yeah have you ever had romulan ale or i, I know that there was a uh, a, a brewery uh, from indiana from out of evansville a tin man they made a klingon beer it was a rye beer it was Oh, it was war ale or something. I can't not remember. But have you ever had anything well, like some, that? Some of our members really love this, the the funny stuff, you know, like with the, the different liquors that are available. Mm -hmm. I no longer drink myself, but I'll sit in there and watch you drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm, I'm good with that. Do you have a web page that people can find out more about the group? Well, in our in our organization, we have a core staff of officers. There's five, you know, four sta four officers plus myself, and we decided that a web page was uh, something that's kind of outmoded. So we do most of our contact through Facebook these days. So okay. we use Facebook right. as our web page. What will be okay. the Facebook page? Uh, I'd have to read it off the card. It's probably right there. Yeah, you can go ahead. But it's uh, it. facebook.com uh, slash USS dot Indiana. Very simple. Pretty easy. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. We'll make sure that Mandy has your information, so we'll get links out there for you as well. Well, we've got a hundred members of our group, not I mean our our Facebook group, and we you know I'm always posting stuff on there. I welcome people's submissions on there, and the main page is also is our is our front doormat, if you will. So, okay, <laughs> that I can understand. It's it sounds fascinating. Well, I, it is fascinating. Like I said, it's a it's a culture and it's something that keeps me interested. And I, once I got out of the Navy, I, I retired from the Navy in 2004. It kind of helped my transition into civilian life, while giving me a little toe in the water of military <laughs> jargon and stuff like that. And I've always loved Star Trek anyway. Yes, yes, I can understand. Well, there we go. Thank you for your service, I guess, brother. You're right. <laughs> thank you for th thank, thank you so you. much. Yes. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you, gentlemen. I, I really like to participate in today. Have a good day. Right. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, brother. Dude, these guys are interesting, man. <laughs> They're dedicated. That's they, what I like about oh, yeah. it. Wow. And you, you didn't even bring your bat lift in. <laughs> we're we're going to get the uh, microphone down for him. The, the bat lift is a four-foot yeah. weapon, and it's really sharp. I'm not sure that they would really allow that. Probably not. But, uh, but uh, right now, we've got uh, someone... Um, the uh, Firehawk, he had mentioned. I'm going to have uh, to put Cullen on the payroll right now. I see that. <laughs> That's right. He's working double duty this evening. Uh, he mentioned uh, the USS uh, Gorkon, and uh, here we have one of the uh, commanding officers, is that correct, of the USS Gorkon? I'm the executive officer. Executive officer. I'm, I'm, I'm the William Riker of the uh, Gorkon. <laughs> You're number the one. XO, baby. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm number one. He, he brought his own uh, chair. You, you did not kick your leg <laughs> over the chair in Will Riker fashion. We have to note that. Well, I'm not Riker, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, few are. It's, it's, it's a tough order. Do you, do you, so you probably don't play the trombone, unfortunately. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, I play the baritone, so. Oh, that's, that's much better. Yes, you you get more ladies that way. Riker didn't need uh, instruments. He just had himself, so that's all right. <laughs> now, he, was, he was his own instrument. He was his own instrument. <laughs> <laughs> he absolutely I, was. I do want to mention here as well, like I talked about the other guest with his uniform, you are also properly attired in a next generation uniform with the black with the gray across the shoulders. You have the red um, turtleneck. I don't know what they'd call that. Um, and you do have the sash across your chest like a Klingon would. Yes. So to let people um, know. Yes. Um, I'm Colonel Brian Dadmore. I'm also in Starfleet Marine Corps and I'm also the um, XO of the USS Gorkon. Thank you, Derek, for making the announcement for me ahead of time. And before I go on, I promised my fellow Nerf Gunners I would say, Hey, Naptown Nerfers, I'm on the radio. Listen up. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm Colonel. I have uh, three diamonds on mine. Mm -hmm. um, I wear the red because I'm certified as an aerospace pilot in Starfleet Marine Corps. And then I have another badge above my Delta Shield. Uh, this is the MECA badge. I'm a certified MECA pilot. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what Mecha is, it's a uh, giant robot. If you ever see the Marcross Robotech series, 
Yes. I pilot the human versions of those robots. And we have the ability to do the three-tier changeover like they do. The mm -hmm. battleoid. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Now, now, you on your they, they call it AAFM in Starfleet Marine. Oh, Corps. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> now, on your card here, you have uh, what looks like the Excelsior class starship. Is that what your yes? The ship USS is? Gorkon is an Excelsior class starship. It's best noted for Admiral Nehef's flagship during the. Um, the Data and Lore Borg invasion, that was her flagship when she come and chewed Picard's uh, backside out. <laughs> yes, I in remember In fact, it well. me and Natalia, I, I'm on her Facebook and message, and I uh, correspond with her off and on mm -hmm. as well. We're really good friends, and she's, she's quite happy to know that her, that her flagship is actually out there as a club out in a national Star Trek organization, which nice. I yeah. belong to Starfleet International too, but I'm also uh, the other ship's captain in Indianapolis for the uh, CAG organization as well. So I actually do double duty as a Klingon, and that's part of the reason why I'm wearing the sash is because okay. I represent both CAG and Starfleet International. Why I'm at, when I'm out on doing stuff like this, I represent both organizations and I'll talk very explicitly with the Kling people who are interested in Klingon, I'll refer them to the CAG organization, and those who want to be Federation or want to be Starfleet Marines, and I'll and do some Starfleet mm -hmm. International, too, as well. Now you, now, you said that you're a, a certified pilot. How do you become a certified pilot in um, Starfleet? It's a set of courses that in, in Starfleet Marine Corps, they have an academy there with certain courses required to take, and then in my case, I took an exam to rewrite the uh, required courses to become a, a um, what they call an AAFM certified pilot. That's the pilots that actually pilot the Robotech mechas. Mm -hmm. The regular mecha pilots are the ones that don't have the conversion type um, okay. equipment. They're just the standard giant robot fighting machines that you see in Battletech and Marcro and the, mm -hmm. the uh, aliens in the Marcross and the non um, battle droids in the in the Marcross series. Um, but there's certain one of us that also are mecha pilots in the AAFM program, and I help set the new standards for that as part of my certification. That's how I won this pin here. Nice. That's cool. There's a lot more to this than I thought. Oh, yeah, yep. much, oh, much more. more. I'm also a fellow podcaster, too. I used to do a show called The Lou Trek Show. Um, we did 276 episodes uh, wow. before one of our hosts passed away Sorry several years ago. Uh, but Lou has continued on. Uh, he does a uh, show called The Battle Bridge. It's a, um, our, our take of the episodes from Star Trek The Next Generation. I come on as the Klingon. Um, I come on on Klingon parts and certain other shows that I want to come on and talk mm -hmm. about that I, that I like to talk about, like Drumhead. I'm going to come on when they okay. talk about the Drumhead show, and I'm going to talk about all the stuff that went on on that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jot that down real quick here. You said the Battle Bridge? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. on. You can uh, find it at Lou Trek Show. It's L L O U T R E K S H O W dot com. Now, you now, now do, you, do you know any Klingon as you do those parts? I do not do much Klingon. <laughs> Linguistics is you, not one of my, you're, is not I, one you're of my a specialties. You're Klingon. I have a friend <laughs> who I can introduce you to who can I, help yes, you with yes. that. Well, the, the nice lady that was here, Tracy, she's a uh, Klingon ling, uh, linguistics expert. She's very good at speaking Klingon. So if I needed help, I could always ask her. Or I could always ask my uh, Cold Steel uh, Quadrant Commander, Mike. Uh, he's... He's a uh, Klingon translator. He travels around the world. And the, uh, there's like a big cave system in Australia. He, he got brought in to translate the um, whole experience in Klingon for people who want to listen to the experience in the Klingon language. Wow. wow. Cool. So Now, I, I noticed that uh, when uh, the, the event page for uh, tonight's event on Facebook, you left a comment on there and how excited you were. And in there, uh, you mentioned that you used to be in the Navy, correct? Yes, I spent five years on the Navy on the ship called the USS Butte. I was a gunner's mate guns. Um, I basically was an ordnance handler uh, for the Navy. I used to load up 16-inch powders and gun shells for one of the big battleships when I was in in the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, Saratoga was, one, was my uh, battle group, and I think it was the Missouri or the New Jersey that was our battleship back then. 
Now, I, I know that uh, Gene Roddenberry, he was also, he spent time in the Navy, and I know a lot of um, the, the stuff involved with Star Trek revolve, involves the Navy as well. How closely, you've actually been in the Navy, and now you're a Starfleet officer. How closely do you think those two come uh, together? The ranks and some of the um, traditions are there. Mm-hmm. Just like I mean, you're obviously not Marine loading Corps. shells and stuff on a starship, yeah. obviously. Well, actually, Photon torpedoes. So. Um, yeah. actually, <laughs> actually, in Starfleet Marine Corps, they have maritime courses where you actually go back and learn the, some of the stuff I did with rigger ships. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is one of the unique features about uh, Starfleet International because they have such a variety of type of courses and stuff that you can learn about, um, either in track or just um, track. Oh, God. Pardon me. Sometimes I'll say trick and track and get it mixed up. Sorry, guys. It's <laughs> I, that was the biggest running gag on the loot, on the loot track show because sometimes I'll slip up and not put the I put the R second. And it's of, all right. Yeah, I can't fix that in editing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's better than the bleeps I used to when I forget and, and put the colorful uh, Klingon cliches in there or the uh, bad sailor talk. You know, what do you hear, Cullen show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. But some of the traditions um, are still there, like the ranking, scene, the ranks and stuff. Um, on the fleet side, they're all the same rank. Most of the rankings, like the rank uh, names and stuff, are the same in Star Trek as they are in the United States Navy. And most of the ranks in the Marine side are also basically the same as in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. I know. I work for the federal government. I work in the Department of Defense, so I, <laughs> I, get, I have to look at the ranks all the time. So I'm used to it. Sure. Uh, was uh, was Star Trek part of the reason that you joined the Navy, or was it just like, I'd like to join the Navy? No, I joined the Navy after I got out of high school because I just didn't want to stay around where I lived at. I lived in a small town up north called Cass City, Indiana. If you take I-69 here and go up about another 35 minutes mm-hmm. north on I-69, um, Walmart, one of the Walmart big distribution centers where all your bananas come from, is yeah. up there in Gas City. Good. <laughs> That's the new banana republic of uh, the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew, I grew up as a Miss Cinewall River rat, and I'm never going to change. Okay. <laughs> but don't take that drive tonight, because we've got a movie to watch. So you sure. got to explore strange new worlds and I've new civilizations. Ex- <laughs> I will not give you any spoilers, but I will tell you, stay for the ending credits. It's worth yes. your time. Okay. And I will have to say, Simon... You wrote great. I, I love your screenplay write-up. And, Justin, you brought Star Trek into where it's respectable. That You both did a great job, and I wanted to go out that, hey, I've been kind of a middle board on supporting J.J. Track or Kelvin Track is now mm-hmm. what it's being referred to. I've been kind of the supporter, but I've also been your biggest critic. Number three, you guys did it right. You did a great job. I'm very proud of what you guys do, and I want the world to hear it out of my mouth. Is, oh. is, are there any uh, dance numbers or like a break dance scene or anything like that in the movie? No. <laughs> oh, well, I, no. I, I hold, I'm I, out. I, I, Forget I, it. I, I will mm. tell you, I will, not give you no, I will not give you no hints of what's going to happen. You're just going to have to go see it tonight. Then after that, if you want to pull me on and, give, and let me critique with you guys, feel free to do it. In fact, that's how I got on the loop. The Lou Trek show originally, yeah. um, we were they were critiquing the first JJ movie, mm-hmm. okay. and I got invited on on a whim, and I got on and the and the fan the the fans that we did have liked me so much I ended up doing 276 other episodes <laughs> after that go. so. Um, yeah. Just if you download it, don't download 13, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write it down. 13 download, is the first one I'm listening to. Listen to okay. 13, but make sure you're in your bed ready to go to sleep because I guarantee you okay. fall asleep oh, after. All right. <laughs> it's movie night with JL Media. Hamilton 16 IMAX is where we do this. Cullen. Yes. CB. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Thank you guys for doing the show. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, not before, a problem at all. Before we just kill it, I've got to get your websites, brother. My websites, well, um, we don't have a website, but on Facebook, it's the 169th MSG um, and USS Gorkon uh, Star Trek Fan Club is, is who we are on Facebook. My organizations is CAG, K A G dot O R G, and Starfleet International is. SFI.org if you want to find out about our organizations. 
Uh, we haven't got our website out up, but before the end of the year, it'll be US, USS Gorkon, all small letters, dot com. We have our net, we have it, we just haven't gotten the website completely built back up again, so we've got it down for the moment, but we'll eventually have that up. Awesome. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, thanks no for problem. stopping in, talking to us. Oh, no, no problem. Glad to, glad to be on and glad to pull the chair up and sit down with you guys <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Well, thank you, brother. And gentlemen, thank you for filling in tonight. And I've been sitting over here just enjoying learning a little bit about what's going on. Well, well, glad we could help. Oh, yeah. That's Start. why you brought us here, right? To do the heavy lifting, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, before we leave, I got to part with my famous ending. Kapla. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that was, but I'm going <laughs> to. Hey, that's success in Klingon. Right. That's my. That's if, one of my few words I do know. And if I if I could to sign off on everything, to, in tribute to Leonard Nimoy, who passed before this movie came out, live long and prosper. Absolutely. May wisdom and honor guide your destiny. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs>